and take it away. Okay. Hi, guys. It. I feel that as a coach, if I don't know if you know, I've been a coach for seven months, which is you know not a necessarily a long time, but it's not. I'm not a new coach anymore, and I feel like it, you know, I know someone's just for you know been a coach for one month, and you have like that initial motivation, and sometimes it you know it's gonna come and go, and I think that it's important to know how to get out of the funk if you do end up, you know, going into kind of, you know, where you don't have as much motivation and you don't want to do it and you want to quit because it is a job that I know that, mo um, you know, a lot of people can relate to that it becomes challenging. So I just wanted to start telling you a little bit about myself and my story. I started out as a coach. Uh, after having my son, he was 18 months, and my journey began when my weight loss journey began in college when I gained out of freshman 15, I gained the freshman 30, and, it, you know, I pretty much kept it um, all four years, I guess. Uh, my mom, when I graduated, my mom got diagnosed with cancer and I became her sole caretaker, and I basically lost all the weight. And not because I dieted, I just, you know, didn't have time to eat and lost all the weight. Fast forward five years, I gained 50 pounds during my pregnancy, and my body completely changed, and it was really hard to, uh, you know, after everything I tried. I became a coach after seeing Stephanie's post about – you know, the income potential, and I saw it as a possibility to stay home with my son. So I became, you know, I became a coach. I was really excited. I started working out, but I wanted to quit not long after becoming a coach because it was very, uh, it, it was a lot, you know. As a new coach, it was overwhelming. I did not have results right away. It was, you know, it took me two months to really get results. And it was just, you know, I had no customer. They had one customer and she was, you know, a longtime friend. So it was very, you know, it was very difficult in the beginning. But, you know, I stuck with it. Stephanie didn't let me quit. My husband didn't let me quit. And I would say my journey, like when I started picking up was, after five months of being a coach. So anyone who's a new coach and isn't really making, you know, it feels like it's taking a long time, I was there. And I took a leap of faith. So I'm a teacher and I had all, like I work in a big school and all the teachers are very negative. Completely, you don't wanna be in there because it's negative central. But I know that they, needed because most of the teachers were overweight and I was like you know and every year they do a biggest loser amongst the teachers and I you know I never got invited because I'm not you know I, even though I was uncomfortable in my body I was never seen as fat you know so it was where for me I didn't have a success story like oh I lost 100 pounds for me it was more losing you know, that extra 10 pounds that makes a difference on some, you know, I'm only 5'2". And so long story short, I decided to reach out to the teachers and I got, you know, this was really a time of high anxiety because of, you know, just my, the people I was reaching out to. And I didn't know if they would take to it. And so I gave this flyer, put it in everyone's mailbox saying that I was gonna do a new year, new you challenge group. And I held a open, you know, like a info session, bought Shakeology, set it all up, had flyers, and no one showed up. <laughs> so it was really, you know, you know, at this point, it's just kind of like, you know, I've been a coach for five months, I'm trying everything, and nothing's working. I didn't give up, and that's the point is I didn't give up. And a couple of days later, a teacher reached out, and before you knew it, I had 10 teachers and it was amazing. My group in January was phenomenal. There was so much participation. It was a time of 
real excitement. I felt, you know, every day I was motivated. I was so excited to work out. I was so excited to pose. I was so excited to help the teachers. I was getting amazing feedback from them because these are the teachers that I would see. So they would be like, oh my God, I love the group. I lost weight. I, I fit into my jeans. And they were seeing results. Everybody was happy with Shakeology. So it was really an amazing moment. And so I, after the month ended and the 30 days ended, they posted acts who would like to continue. And that was when it all went downhill. They didn't, you know, only one teacher really wanted to continue. I, you know, one of the teachers I worked with, she's my, uh, she's a power in my classroom. So I made her continue. <laughs> Not that she wanted to, but I made her. And then I had one other teacher. And then so my February challenge group was, a disaster. I had little participation. I had maybe, you know, 10 people in the challenge group, which was the same as in January. And so going from, I would come home and there would be 20, 25 posts to one, maybe two if I was lucky. And so that was kind of how I started to lose my motivation. There, you know, I wasn't getting any participation. I would reach out. They would ignore me. And then I just kind of felt like a bad coach. I was like, no one's, you know, there's no one's being receptive to me. No one's being excited. I'm posting, oh, show me your workout photos and no one's posting. Um, I also, personal development was big. I was reading uh, the four hour work week and I didn't, you know, in the beginning it was great. And then I was, kind of, I didn't really get into it. And so then I stopped being consistent with my personal development. Then I, um, then I switched workout videos. So I was doing Insanity. So I had started with T25 and I loved it. Um, and then I continued with Insanity Max and I loved it. And I was consistent because I loved the workout. So then I went and I tried the 21 Day Fix Extreme. And I had tried the 21 Day Fix in sh Extreme, in the, uh, the original. And I wasn't crazy about Autumn, and I know a lot of people love her, but you know, I'm, I'm a Shanti person, so he's my man. <laughs> uh, so that was, you know, that was, and I kind of knew it, and I was like, what's up? I'm like, I don't, you know, I didn't want to. And so I ended up not being consistent with my workouts as well. And it was just, uh, okay, so. I don't know what's going on. I hear kind of noise. I don't know. Is those noises? Sounds like animal noises. No? Okay. Everyone can hear me? So, uh, I... Where's that? Okay. I don't know what's that. Okay. Hold so on. I'm Let me mute it. Let me mute it. Let me mute it. Hold on. Okay. Okay. You should be good now. Okay. So, I... You know, I knew that I just... I wanted to quit again. And I was just like, this is taking too much. I am on the phone all the time. I'm not spending time with my family. Long story short, I, you know, February was a horrible month, but I stayed consistent. And so like, this is where, you know, I wanted to present on when you feel like you're in a slump, when you don't want to do all the things that are required as a coach, I think that, you know, you kind of have to have fall back on something. So that's really where I, you know, wanted to bring you up in my story and then how I kind of lost my groove and how I'm getting it back. And hopefully you'll find some of these tips useful. So now I guess I'll share my slideshow so you guys can see. Um, so can everybody see? Is it, or is it showing? Can, can I make it? Blue. Can everybody see? Yeah, I can see it. Should I go slideshow? Okay. Uh, yeah, you can go ahead. Okay. So, um, so I, so one thing that I would say in case you are, you know, in a funk, is to stay consistent. So I stayed consistent, and. And what I mean with stay consistent, I just focused on posting. And why I did that was because I'm in the public eye. So I knew that it would be detrimental to my business if even though I didn't feel like posting, 
I stopped posting because then they would be like, what happened? Why aren't you working out? Why aren't you posting? You know, you post a motivation quote every week and, you know, every day and now you're not posting. And then if I just, you know, decided, okay, I'm in a funk and then next month I'm out of the funk, then I feel like I wouldn't have the credibility. So in case you are, I feel like it's really, really important to at least post, even if you don't want to post, make sure you're getting in your two to three posts a day. Uh, I, and then I also another thing that I did was that I got my teacher group going again so I reached out to all my teachers and this is one of just like my tips on how I started to you know get back into the swing of things is I got my teacher group I reached out to all of them I told them you know how are you doing and then all of them said you know they weren't consistent you know after the group ended they you know either gained back the weight or they stopped working out so i got that going back you know my group going again which has been great i also started with the i found a new book with personal development and i would say that in case you know you have a similar situation and you decide that you know, you, you're reading a book, you're not into it, you find that you're not consistent with listening or reading every day, find a new book. And I'm thinking about, you know, I think on my part that I didn't, you know, just find a new book, but I think that it's really important and personal development is everything. And I think it's the heart of being a coach is, and I feel like every career should say, you know, work on personal development. But what's great is that, it focuses on you and it makes you better. There's nothing. And, you know, even if it's hard, you just think about you're working on yourself. You're not doing anything for anybody else, even though once you start working on yourself, you're helping others, but it's just for you to become a better person. Um, you get to reflect on yourself and evaluate your life holistically. You make goals. Um, it allows you to dream and it just makes you feel empowered. Every time I listen to pers like personal development that I'm into, I feel empowered. I feel like I can accomplish anything. And I think that that is definitely, if you feel unmotivated, that's something to definitely make sure that you're reading a good personal development book because there are a lot and not necessarily everything speaks to you, but you have to find one that speaks to you and that you can connect to and you feel like, oh, I'm taking away because you know, there's books that have been recommended and, you know, they're not necessarily for me. It's not that they're not a good book, but if I can't relate to it, then I'm not going to be able to take from it what I need to take from personal development. So I would say that that is number one. Um, step number two is small steps, small goals, celebrate small successes. So you have to make, if you're in a funk, make small goals. It's not to necessarily, there's so much that as a coach you have to do. But if you put them into a multiple list, it's going to be overwhelming. And the reality is you'll still feel unmotivated because you may not be able to accomplish everything. So I would say for me, it was, you know, when I was in my funk, it was post three times a day. And that was it. And then it was slowly post three times a day and work out. And then it's, you know, now it's post three times a day, work out personal development. And now we're doing post three times a day, workout, personal development and invite. So as you know, I'm not doing everything it takes to be a great coach, you know, at the same time, but slowly I'm gonna get there. And I think that that's what you wanna do is that you wanna get there. And, and I, for me, I understand that, you know, since I'm not doing it, you know, my progress is gonna be slower, but I'm okay with that because I know that this is what I need for me to be a successful coach is that, you know, I'm getting out of my funk, so I need to work slowly. And I think that if you're, you know, in that situation, you know, and then, you know, some people are made to go all in and they can handle it. But I think that for me, this is something that's been very successful is taking one thing at a time. And then as soon as I'm, that thing is off my check, you know, off the list, then I work on the next thing and I keep adding to it. Um, and then you just make sure that you're celebrating, like, I was in a really bad place, but I posted. So that's something to celebrate, right? I didn't fall off the map from, you know, the public eye. Uh, step three, be thankful every day. This is something that has helped me tremendously is just be grateful for everything. And 
waking waking up with a grateful heart and going to bed with a grateful heart and not necessarily to be thankful for the same things every day but to be thankful for the small things so someone asks how you're doing after you were out from work you know having a conversation and laughing unexpectedly those small things are all things to be thankful for on top of you know your family and all the things that you're always thankful for but i think recognizing those small moments make a big difference in your your happiness and when you're happy you're more motivated so i think that focusing on what you're thankful for is really important uh, finding inspiration this is so important because i think finding the right success story to be inspired by because there's so many especially as a coach there's tons of success stories but not necessarily are all of them stories that you can connect to so i think that finding the uh, success story that you can actually connect to and you can say wow she's very similar to me and look at what she did versus if you find someone who has a success story for me losing 100 pounds may not be something that i can connect to but someone who has a very similar situation to me is something that i can be inspired by and make sure that you have a vision board and if your vision board isn't inspiring you you make it so for me, I had a, just a plain dry erase board and I found that it wasn't inspiring me. It was just, you know, it had everything. But so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Barnes & Noble, get magazines and cut out pictures for, you know, pictures that are more real and concrete and remake my vision board. So I think that if you're in a funk and you don't have the motivation, remake what you want and think about what you want again because it may change because as you get closer and as you start becoming more successful you may say okay maybe i need a bigger vision board or maybe i need something that and then include small term goals not necessarily things that so are so far but things that you can attain in a couple of months because then it, you know then you can say oh wow look at i did this i can take it off my vision board and then go on to the next big thing uh, post it, post your goal everywhere. So make sure you have it on your vision board. Make sure you have it on the screensaver, the fridge, everywhere. Just as a reminder that, you know, what your goal is. So you just are constantly, okay, this is what I'm working for. This is what I'm working for. For me, it's to, you know, be financially free to stay home with Xavier. So posting it everywhere. Uh, get excited. Talk about it. So I think that, you know, once you are starting to get your motivation back, just speaking to other people about how great and how excited you are about what you're, you know, what, where you see your life going and what you're doing and how you love working out and psychology and how you love inspiring others, it's going to keep that motivation so you don't necessarily lose it. Because if you just keep it to yourself and you're not sharing it with other people, it's just another way to continue to be motivated um and believe in the unknown so i think faith and believing that we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow but if we believe that it's going to be great chances are it will be great um and act as if it's already real so if you feel like okay by this date i'm going to be a stay-at-home mom i'm going to be able to stay home with xavier it's going to happen right so you have to make sure that you're speaking as if it's real. And then once you have it, hold on to it because it's easy to lose. Uh, build anticipation. So I think that this is something that's kind of, I think we tell our challengers to make sure that, okay, you're gonna start Monday fresh. But I think for us, it's also important because if we say, okay, I'm gonna start Monday or if I'm gonna start tomorrow. It doesn't have to be necessarily now, but kind of getting your mind ready, get your mind prepared can help you get more excited and then say, okay, it's gonna really happen. Um, it helps build that excitement. Uh, think about the benefits. So not necessarily how hard it is because it is hard, but about all the wonderful things that come from it. You know, you get in shape, you become a better person, you get you get to inspire and, and affect so many people. And, you know, and whatever's on your vision board will become 
something that you're going to actually see happen. Uh, so self affirmations are something that I just started doing. I've always done, you're going to have a great day because of, I guess it's always been something I posted about, have a wonderful day, but I haven't really been doing self affirmations. Like you're beautiful, you're confident, you're amazing. You can do this. So like, as I'm walking throughout the day, I'm telling myself this and I, it's amazing. I, I don't know why I didn't do this my whole life. And if you don't do self-affirmations, I would definitely highly recommend them. But just saying, you know, telling yourself things that you, that are just nice things you want to hear people say. So don't wait for them to say it. Say it to yourself. I think it's definitely something that will, uh, you know, help you get your motivation, your groove back. And understanding that motivation comes and goes. It's like a tide. It'll come, it, you know, it comes and then it goes. And then it comes and it goes. But understanding that it's going to come back. So not giving up is key because it's going to come back. You just have to, you know, be patient, be aware, and make sure that you're proactive and bringing it back and doing whatever you can to get it back. And not necessarily kind of just being okay, my motivation's gone and I'm going to quit, you know, really trying to be proactive about how to get your motivation back, uh, being consistent and knowing that obstacles and challenges, challenges are agents of growth. So what to kill you makes you stronger, right? That's what I, I, I like to live by. And that's all I have for you guys today. <laughs> and I hope you found it useful. Um, I think that it's, you know, I think that it's amazing how as you, you know, being a coach and going through this kind of these challenges and things that you don't really see happening and learning from, it just is, it's really refreshing and enlightening about how things change. And uh, I think motivation is key and knowing what motivates you is key as well. So if anyone has any questions or I don't know, Luke, you can take it over. <laughs> um, can you stop the, the screen share? Yes. All righty. Well, Jessica, thank you so much for, uh, talking to us. I think that was very helpful. Um, there are so many things that you have mentioned that I can actually relate to. Um, before I start running my mouth, I just want to ask, does anyone have any questions or anything they want to add or similar, like, like similar situations that they have also endured or maybe someone might feel down or anything like that that they want to share with us maybe? Does anyone raise their hand? Okay, because actually I have a question for you. Um, there is a slide when you say uh, to celebrate um, small goals and small victories and that, and I'm curious, was it because you had your mindset on such big accomplishments that you neglected the small victories or what like what's the reason for you deciding to to shift your thought process to uh, make it important to celebrate like small goals and small victories? What made you change that mindset? Well, for me, it was I think that I was looking at it like, oh my God, I'm not a diamond. I don't have enough coaches uh, under me. I didn't have any working coaches, so I had discount coaches, and I think that. For me, looking at the big goal, which was really becoming a diamond coach, yeah. it was overwhelming and necessarily mm, kind of discouraging instead of me focusing on these little, these little steps are going to lead to me being a diamond coach. So instead of me figuring out, like, why am I not a diamond coach, let me work on all these little steps and then I'll get there. So kind of taking a backwards approach backwards approach versus like this is the big goal I'm not there why am I not there instead of thinking that way saying okay I'm gonna be consistent once I'm consistent then once I'm inviting people then I'm gonna you know I'm gonna find the right person I just have to make sure that I'm doing these little steps that are gonna lead to the big goal versus me looking at oh my god the big goal and why am I not doing it 
because, or why am I not there and why am I not accomplishing this? And I'm not where I want to be at the time that I want to be there. So I think for me, doing that shift has made a big difference in kind of my feelings and Mm -hmm. me not wanting to quit (laughs) and feeling motivated again. That's good. Um, Now, how difficult was it to to prioritize the the plan of action, like making the steps um, to help you get back on track and get back on your feet? Because like you started by, you know, I'm going to get consistent by working out, then it's going to be working out and posting. Like, Like what made you decide to come up with that plan of action? Well, I knew that I knew that posting was kind of the most important as far as like just not losing followers okay. because I've had people at my job say, "Oh, you didn't work out yesterday." <laughs> so at that point, I was like, "Okay, I guess I have to make sure I'm working out." I didn't see a workout. <laughs> I'm like, oh, goodness, I guess no days off for me. So for me, like, and then I've also had people uh, Facebook me saying that they're, I don't know what they call themselves, like a stalker. Like, they're like, I watch you secretly. (laughs) We're going to call them fans for the purpose of this call. We're going to call them fans, admirers. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, but they, they had some funny names, you know, they're like, I've been watching you. (laughs) <laughs> I'm like, okay. Scary, yeah, yeah. So I knew that, you know, but in a good way, like, oh, and then can you help me? Uh, but for me, I knew that I knew that I was in, you know, everyone's watching me. Even if they're not liking my posts, they're watching. And even from, you know, what Stephanie says, like, they're all watching. So I knew that for me that I knew that even if I was having a down day, I still had to post. Because in the beginning, when I first started as a coach, I wasn't consistent. So I would post. And then, and then it was hard because then I would just randomly say, oh, join my challenge group. But there was nothing, there was no credibility behind it. So for me, you know, I look at it like not necessarily that posting is going to bring me the, you know, posting is going to bring me the challenges because really you have to invite and have the conversations. But it's, you know, it's a, it's key to then inviting and having the credi- credibility to then have a conversation. Mm-hmm. So to me, like, you know, that's how I view it as that's, you know, definitely one of the most important things and then being proof that the product works because if I don't have before and after pictures again I don't have credibility credibility why do you know why do you want to join my challenge group if you know I'm stuffing my face with cookies (laughs) (laughs) you know so and then you know I know that you know I know that you know and then personal development is important because that helps me become a better person so I can there, you know, then, you know, then it transpires to, you know, how I speak to people, my posts are more motivating, I feel better, and then I want to do more things, and I want to invite people, and I want to have those conversations. So for me, it's kind of that chain, um, that's how it kind of works out in my head, as well as one thing, you know, how one thing affects it. I don't know if it, you know, I don't know if it's right, but (laughs) that's how in my head, I process what's important for getting, you know, getting back on track. Mm. It's good. And um, how long did it take you to bounce back from that place where you were? Um, I would say it was, it was a month of, it was the entire month of February and I just kind of started. So I'm two weeks getting my groove back. <laughs> mm. There you go. Yeah, two, <laughs> two weeks and... I just finished How to Be a Badass. <laughs> Talk about it. <laughs> um, <laughs> hopefully, I'm, you know, working my way out on how to be a, you know, being a badass. <laughs> but You will. I have no doubt in my mind. All right. Does anyone else have questions or anything that they want to share? Raise your hand if you do. Oh, Blair. Okay. Hold on. So I just wanted to thank you for that because I've been a little bit on the thumbs and I feel like 
um, all the tips and all the motivation you gave me will give my March a little bit better ending and bring me back to, and bring my April full swing. Yay. <laughs> Thank you, Blair. That, <laughs> I'm happy because it happens. Like, I feel like it's a real, it's real. It just, you know, it's, it's a hard job. It's a, a very rewarding yeah. job, but it's, you know, it, it's, it, in my opinion, it's not easy, <laughs> but it, you know, it's worth it, but it's, you know, you, it's hard to keep the motivation going, going, but I think that uh, I'm very happy that you found it useful. Anyone else? Going once, twice. Well, if there are no more questions or comments, this will conclude then our call. And I will wish everybody a wonderful rest of your Sunday. And until next time. Peace out, everyone. Bye. Bye.